Coach, uh, talk to us real quick. Uh, so open a statement about your your thoughts about the 2011 Bulldogs. I mean, we're excited about the uh, 2011 football campaign. Uh, obviously, last year we didn't have the year that we wanted, and uh, we're anxious to go back to work and um, try to uh, make amends from last year. On the offensive side of the ball, you have your signal caller there. Coach, talk about the importance of having a guy like Deontay Mason in place. Well, I mean, anytime you can have your signal caller coming back, and particularly a guy who has, ex who has experience, something that he can pull upon uh, is an advantage. Uh, it, the other thing will be is surrounding him around, uh, putting guys around him that can make plays. Last year we didn't have that. Hopefully we'll have it this year. Um, going into the camp, what's, what's kind of the most important thing to you try to get done? Well, I think we need to understand uh, more, most important than what leadership is. I think once we, we, we get established what leadership is, uh, then I think it's important that every guy uh, kind of establish his role on this football team. And once he establishes that role on the football team, live up to that role. And uh, I think if we're able to do those things, um, yeah, I think we'll have a chance this year. What, because you, you, you've built championship teams in the conference before, and we know your style of play, you know, you're mm -hmm. a tough-minded kind of team. How do, you, how do you make a team kind of well, it's something that you got to do every day. And not only do you have to do it every day, you got to make sure these guys believe that they can be that type of football team. If they don't believe it, you don't have a chance. Um, so we'll do things day in and day out that um, get our mindset and our body ready to be that type of football team. Uh, we have to believe in each other. We have to work a certain way. And uh, I think, again, if we're able to do those things and guys are able to rise up, we'll be just fine. Are there questions that you have about the team right now that need to be answered in the next couple of weeks? Well, there's always going to be questions about the football team. Even the teams who are predicted to finish first uh, in this conference are going to have questions about their football team, and we're no exception to that. We have questions. You know, our offensive line, we're expecting them. We need them to gel together, uh, and that's always tough to do because you, you're going to always have five offensive linemen out there at one time. We need our quarterback to be more consistent. We need our running backs and receivers to make big plays. Uh, go to the defensive side. We need to be able to put pressure on the quarterback. Uh, we need our linebackers to be able to, uh, to be our good quarterbacks out there and, and defensively. We need to find a way to turn the ball over, get the ball back in our offensive hands. Special teams, we need to um, be able to make plays on special teams, get points when we're, when we're called to get points, and, and get uh, change field position when we're called upon to do so. So uh, those are just some of the areas that we need to work on. Uh, yeah, but, uh, heck, I don't know who they are. <laughs> no, seriously, uh, you know, we got some young guys kind of on our shelf um, that we're really excited about uh, them coming in playing, and uh, uh, we're going to give them a chance to grow this uh, training camp, and hopefully uh, you'll hear about them in due time. <laughs> if there's one thing, Coach, that you say, if this goes right, this can be a good, really good season for Alabama, and what's that one thing? <laughs> Got to be able to make plays and stop plays. Uh, last year, uh, we gave up way too many big plays, and we didn't make enough of them. I think if we're able to flip that the other way around, uh, we'll have a chance of being a very good football team. Uh, I know you've been around football a long time, Coach. I know you've been a coach with Alabama and the but are there some of the guys around this conference right now that you think are, that you like to watch play? I mean, you, you don't like the game plan for them necessarily, but you know, you got really, really good players in this conference. Of course. I mean, we have, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm also a student of the game, you know, and, uh, you know, I want my team to do well. But when I look on film and I see outstanding players, uh, I get excited about those guys. And uh, it's good for our conference, you know, and for us to be able to go up and, and, and compete against those guys, it's great for our conference. And, uh, you know, I'm just hoping that that, that that week we play them, they kind of have an off week. But <laughs> but other than that, it's great, you know, and we, and we do. We have a lot of uh, uh, talent throughout the conference um, on the offense side, defense side, and even the special team side. So we'll be excited about playing against all those guys. They're pretty much all over the, all over the conference. Uh, last question for you, Coach. We're looking at your schedule. Uh, and how do you approach kind of the conference schedule? Are there certain games you say are must wins? Or do you, how, do, how do you go about, you know, projecting the season out? Well, our conference this year is probably going to be more competitive than it's ever been. I think if you go around the room, and poll each coach privately and ask, ask him who you think going to win it, they'll say themselves. They say, they'll say their team. Um, 
and it's not going to be far off. I think this year we're going to be very, very, very competitive. I think that the coaches who, and I shouldn't get a secret away, but I'm going to give it, the coaches who look beyond their opponent will, will lose to that opponent. It's going to be that close. Now, of course, we'll have some games where teams get blown out, but I think you're going to see a lot of close football games. You're going to see a lot of teams beating a lot of different teams. And um, so the answer to your question is, can we go off and say, okay, this is a must win. We got to line up week one, and that's, how, that's what we got to be focused on. Week two, that's what we got to be focused on and so forth. I think when we start looking beyond other teams, you can't see the trap in front of you. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. All right. Coach, talk a little real, real quick about last year. Not a lot of respect from the Hornets, and well, you end up one possession away from winning right. a conference championship. Talk about kind of the big picture last season. Well, you know, last year is it's exactly like you said. Um, you know, we started out, uh, you know, with the preseason picks, and you know, our guys were motivated by that. Um, so uh, they bought into the plan. You know, for the last couple of years, we've been talking about buying into the plan and being consistent on the field and uh, they did that you know we performed when uh, guys made plays when they needed to in the big games and the all coin game and uh, uh, Magic City Classic our guys continued to compete and fight and you know we were able to get to the SWAC championship game and uh, you know naturally we came up short but you know our, our theme this year is one team one dream unfinished business so uh, we're looking forward to uh, this upcoming season. Last year coach you guys evolved into a team well, our defense uh, performed real well last year, and uh, naturally, uh, Coach said Thorns and our defensive coordinator, he did a good job. I mean, he was organized and structured, and he had a plan for every game. And our guys bought into his plan, and they went out and played well. But uh, we had some guys that can play. You know, we had up front Kenji Cotton who's a preseason all-swag player, and uh, Jaquay Everett, he, you know, he was a big force. Uh, Demarcus Taylor, our starting linebacker in the middle there, and then, of course, in the back end with Kiwan Riley and Donovan Maslin. You're talking about two all-swag guys. So uh, the, the, the combination of uh, solid scheming and coaching uh, with, uh, with, with some solid players uh, allowed us to be successful on defense. Yeah. Well, it's huge, you know. As a former receiver, whenever I had to go up against uh, some of the really, really good defensive backs, uh, it takes so much energy, uh, and it kind of takes you out of your game. And uh, with Donovan Maslin, with his experience, and he's been a starter since his freshman year, Kiwan Riley, who could play cornerback or free safety, uh, it's always good where you can just say, okay, we're going to take this one side and cover your best guy and still be able to play a little – uh, combination man zone on the other side of the field. So uh, that's always huge. And, um, you know, we, we're grateful that we have two guys uh, in the back area that can do that. Yeah, on the offensive side, Coach, you got two guys that were actually explosive on the outside of T.C. Williams. And, uh, yeah. Nick Andrews. Talk about those two guys. All right. Well, both guys are uh, solid, solid guys, both of them. They're good players. And, uh, uh, you know, we think um, – with, with Nick and his experience and being here for four years and starting it for four years, um, you know, Nick is on the cusp of breaking all the receiving records uh, at ASU that are held by me, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, he, uh, he's been good. And when, it, when we got him here, I, one of the things I told him, I said, if you don't break every record here at this school by the time you're done, then you have not fulfilled your potential. And uh, he's done that. And then TC, I mean, he's a competitor, you know. He's a walk-on. Uh, he came there, and uh, he's played well for us, and uh, he's done some outstanding things. So it always helps when you have two guys that you know you can count on, you can get the ball to, and they can make plays for you. What, what, what's it going to take, Coach, for you guys to make that final step? Well, you know, the foundation has been laid. Our, um, our guys have been working hard, and they've been competing. And uh, they got a taste of it last year. That was huge for us to get that experience, um, to be able to prepare for the championship game and all. And it'll give them uh, some confidence this year. But, you know, all in all, it's going to take our defense continuing to play well. 
Um, our offense, of course, we got to score some points and, and uh, allow our playmakers to do just that, be playmakers. And then on special teams, um, you know, we got to continue to play well on special teams. And uh, I feel like we got all three phases intact. But uh, it is July, and we all feel good about our team in July. So uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Back in the suit again on the sidelines, being the, be, be the head coach. Um, what's that excitement like for you? Well, I'm just elated just to have the opportunity to carry on the great legacy of uh, Marino Cassif and all the great players that have participated at Alcorn State University. And, uh, you know, just to have that chance again to, to mentor our young men and do the things to make sure that our young people are doing the right thing, I'm just excited about it. But you have a reputation as an offensive guru. Talk about what you, you – know, there's some things in place over there. Talk about what you want to try to get done. Well, we have well we have an excellent quarterback. And when you have an excellent quarterback, you got to get him some other pieces that are going to surround him in order to take some of the pressure off him. Certainly we got to run the ball and do some things. We had a chance to go down in Louisiana and get the best running back in the state of Louisiana to kind of take on some of the pressure off him. And, and certainly you got to overhaul our speed, and that's one of the things that we're working on as we speak down. We probably won't get it this year, but certainly we have some guys that can do the things that we need to do. We were decimated on defense by losing 19 players because at the end of the day, offense sells tickets, defense wins games, but special team wins, wins championships, and we got an outstanding kicker in, in that department. So certainly we got a couple good pieces that we're going to work with, but at the end of the day, we're going to play 60 minutes of brave football. What, what is the great challenge you see? Our biggest challenge is just changing the mindset. When you've been anemic for 17 years, has not been to the promised land, when we're accustomed to being there on a regular basis, it's just the mindset. And I think our players are buying in and doing the things that we're asking them to do, paying attention to detail, going to class, and certainly coming in and getting at that iron on a regular basis and competing. So that's really what it's all about. How do you sell that to not only the players, Coach, but the fans, the alumni? I think the excitement is there, the product that you put on the field, the things that we're doing down there. We've kind of done a great job with our facilities. we got a new dormitory. we got an excellent uh, president just came in with a great vision of talking about playing at a high level, talking about just excellent, being outstanding. And certainly when you hear that enough, it kind of it kind of spills over to those young men, and they have kind of picked it up, and they've done a good job. Are, are there any names down there, Coach, that we don't know yet that you think you might know in a couple weeks? Yeah, it's a couple guys down that you probably gonna know about. We got a, a young man that we had the chance to recruit by the name of Damian Wilson, who everybody in the country recruiting his folk, he ended up coming to uh, coming to Alcorn. So he he came him himself. You know, Anthony Williams, who was the very best player that we that we got out of Louisiana. Everybody in the country was chasing him, the LSU's, the old misses all up, and he came as well. And you know, Isaac Williams, who's been in our program for three years, who's just been outstanding. And certainly with him anchoring on the offensive line, is going to give us an opportunity not only to, to pass the ball with Eric Calendar, but give us an opportunity to run the ball. Now, defensively, we got some work to do on the defense side of the ball, but I think, you know, uh, Robley and a couple other guys at that linebacker position, we got a new cat coming in by the name of uh, William Thomas, who transferred in from South Alabama, who's just a, a pretty good player, plays the middle linebacker. So with that say to say that, you know, our secondary is going to be very young. But at the end of the day, we're going to play 60 minutes of brave football. We'll have fun. How, is, is that what you, how, do, how are you selling this, your, your vision of, of Alcorn State to alumni? When you meet them on the street and shake hands and go to an alumni club, what, what I sell them about about putting together an outstanding program. When you get an opportunity to come to Alcorn, we've always been the best. Our legacy said in 68, 69, 70, we won it. 71, 74, we had another opportunity to go there. 79, when I was there, we won it again. And then we closed it out with the, the 84 team that went undefeated, and then we came back with Steve McNair in 92 and 94. So certainly our legacy speaks for itself when you've had Steve McNair, Ronnell Young, uh, Leslie Frazier, just to name a few the guys that we that we've had at our place and uh, the excitement is really what it's all about the product is really what we need to be and the things that we're looking to do the move we're looking to move our school to another level and be able to compete on the cutting edge and do it at a very very high rate Which lastly, uh, you know, the suit and shades are back in the swag what I mean what you know talk about this conference and being, being a part of it well 
Well, overall, if you look at our great history, we've done an outstanding job uh, with some outstanding players that have been here. And just to name, when you think about the Doug Williams, who's really back, the Walter Payton's, the Buck Buchanan's, uh, the Jerry Rice's, all those guys that have participated, it says a lot about our rich, our rich legacy. And our task is to continue to bring in those kind of young men into our university to be able to compete at a high level. Certainly, the uh, the competition level is fierce, but that's we wouldn't have it any other way. And certainly we're going to have some guys that are going to be able to compete at that level right now. When you think about Casey over at Jackson State, who's doing a great job. We got Brandon Bridge to go along with a number of outstanding defensive players at Grambling and at Prairie View. So the players are here. We just got to keep doing the things that we do, playing at a very high level and putting an excellent product on the field. Thank you. What is it that brings you back to Grambling? What's the pull back to the campus? For me, yes, it's Gremlin. <laughs> you know, for me, you know, Gremlin has meant everything to me. Gremlin is probably is the one soul provided that uh, allowed me an opportunity to do some things that I've done in life. So it's easy to come back to Gremlin because it is Gremlin what it meant to me. Well, first of all, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't deal with the pressure part of it because I always feel like pressure is something that a individual put up on himself. As far as the expectation, I, I expect the same thing that they do, and I understand that. Having been a part of Grambling, you know, as a player and as a coach, and and just as the alumni, I think that's the way it should be, and that's the way it, it's supposed to be. Well, one of the things I try to get over to them, they got to have some pride. They got to have a love for, for, for where they are and the fact that they're at Grambling. I don't lie to them to put on other colleges' T-shirts or sweatshirts to walk around the Grambling campus when they're at Grambling. And to me, that shows you the love of Grambling. And when you leave after four or five years, you'll realize that Grambling meant a lot to you. Talented-wise, you know, I think where we are, especially from a defensive side of the football, I, I think we're pretty decent offensively. Uh, you know, we got a pretty decent offensive line, but the problem on offense is the fact that we're going to be playing with a lot of young skill set. You know, whether or not it's receivers, whether or not it's running back or quarterback, and we all know if you want to make some plays, you, you look for those guys to make plays. So at the end of the day, some young guys going to have to stand up and, and make some plays for us. I think it's people. It all depends on how you handle your coaching staff and, and when you go out to recruit and, and sell what you're doing and people believe in what you're doing because of the, the, the standard that you set for yourself. I think at the end of the day, you know, I like to walk out of parents' house and, and they say, you know what, I want my son to play for Doug Williams and Grambling State University. I think that's what it's all about. Well, you know, it's, it's always going to be a success if you win. But at the end of the day, you know, you got to get ready because, believe it or not, it's kind of like the hurricane. You know, when one of those little hurricanes start brewing out there in the Atlantic or the Pacific, you can't stop it. The season is on its way. We can't stop the season and say, hold up, we ain't ready yet. You got to be ready when it comes. Thank you, Coach. All right. Coach, how special is it for you to be the head coach of Jackson State who celebrated 100 years of football? Ooh, boy, you know what I mean? I'm excited about it. I'm just glad that, uh, that God put me in this position to be there. And uh, um, I, it's magic, and um, I'm very fortunate. And I'm just proud to, you know, say that I'm there. The 100 years of football at Jackson State, especially after all the football has been played, uh, all the great players that came through to be here and, and celebrate this with them. Guys, I have to ask a question. Talk about your quarterback. Our quarterback? Kind of that kid, he's a good one. Casey's a good one. Um, I think his future's ahead of him. I think uh, he's done a lot for us, uh, you know, coming this season and, and just did a tremendous job. And, and this year, um, I listened to him talk coming down in the van. And uh, 
Um, he just talked some things that um, a normal guy wouldn't talk about what he would like to see and where he would like to go. And it's all humble. It's nothing um, brass to where he expected this to inspect that. He's just a, a guy who likes to play the game and he wants to continue playing the game. And he's going to work hard to do everything he can. Uh, without us even looking and watching or making him, he's going to work just that hard to make himself the best quarterback he can be. Coach, I've seen a lot of different teams that you've had at Central State and Tuskegee over here. And your teams have been different. Some teams have been explosive, others have been more conservative, defensive minded. What's a typical Rick Comedy kind of football team? Well, shut you down defensively and uh, puts a lot of points on the board if we can. Now, if we don't get a lot of points on the board, I still want to shut you down defensively. <laughs> Are there some guys on, uh, over, over on campus now, Coach, who, whose name you may not know who may emerge this season? Are there some guys that names you want to tell Yeah, I, I think there's a kid by the name of Mike Hill. I was talking to those guys about him on the way down. He's an outside linebacker, and I think Mike Hill um, uh, does a tremendous job. He's all about business, all about school. I mean, you know, the guy wears glasses walking around campus, looks like he's a, a genius, but when he takes them off and gets the field, I like that type of guy. You know, that, you know, really a terror when he hits the field and just love the game, get in the weight room. That's what needs to be done, you know, the full package. And um, I think he's a guy on defense that does those things. Another kid by the name of Perkins, another wide receiver, that you look out for him. Uh, we recruited him last year, and he's the same mode that you don't know him right now, but he will make himself known because of what he's doing now. When you look at the overall conference, there's some pretty good teams this year, some really good football Yes, there are. Give us your sense of the entire conference. I think it's just going to be a fight to the finish myself. Uh, I know we were picked in the E for bullseye, but um, it's going to be a fight to the finish. You know, new coaches back in the league. You know, when you got a new guy coming in, sometimes the kids get highly motivated and, you know, and play, you know, like Doug and Alcorn and guys like that. But they're good coaches as well, you know, and they're going to drive those teams hard. And so that's what's going to make us better, highly competitive. A group of men also who like getting after it, you know, you know, like getting after each other. You know, we're competitive as men. So I think it's going to be fun and um, highly competitive. For you, Coach, what's the best part of being in this conference with teams and coaches like this? Um, I, I, think the I think the best part for me is uh, being able to be associated with the guys that are in this room, uh, knowing them for a lifetime, knowing these young men for the rest of my life, and, um, you know, and being able to share um, a part in their lives as we go through. I mean, um, as I said before, you know, all the hardware and trophies, I got many of them that some of them, half of them are broke down in my cellar. But the memories that you have from being here today and what you've done in the past, got, no one can take them from you. You know, they're above a trophy, above an award, you know, and, and this is why I value this and love this so much. When guys leave Jackson State, what do you want them to take from you? Well, number one, I want them to take a degree. I want them to be able to graduate and go on to where they want to be and I want them to take care of their families and, and raise their kids right and get, find a good church and, you know, and, and be a good father. You know, I think that's important, you know, that they know the responsibility of being a husband and, uh, and, and moving on and, love, and what love is all about, not always being cold, you know, being able to say a good word, you know, and knowing that their tongue can drive them anywhere they want to go. You know, the tongue itself is, you can drive you to success or to failure. And uh, once they realize that, don't, you know, a good word always gets you a long way. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Coach, uh, to your two of the Carl Morgan area at, at Mississippi Valley, what do you take positive from last year? Uh, I think the team never did quit at any point in time. And there was, uh, there was several Saturdays that it, they could have easily folded the tent and went home. And I think they persevered, and I think that's a lifelong lesson that, uh, that'll benefit everybody that was involved in the program last year. So uh, we're optimistic that uh, better days are ahead. I think we got uh, some better talent. I think we'll do a better job of coaching. And there's a certain comfort level that wasn't there last year between the players and the coaches, and I think that's going to help us. Let's talk about the spring practice. How'd that go for you? All right, went well until the second to last day. We lost uh, Oliver Hughes, who's our returning quarterback. Uh, started eight games for us last year. Oliver tore his ACL the second, uh, second to last day. So he's out for the year. So we're kind of back at square one, the quarterback. But I think uh, we got some candidates uh, that we didn't have last year. Last year, we didn't have anybody that had played anywhere. So this year, coming back, we, we got some guys that have played somewhere. 
and so uh, I think that's uh, that's a better starting point than last season. So hopefully we'll, we'll find a guy that's a credible starter. Coach, uh, what, what phrases would you like to hear when people watch your team? What, how would you like them to describe your football team? Uh, I, I'd like for uh, somebody to say, hey, that, that's a competitive group. They play hard. Uh, anytime uh, a coach will give you a compliment about your guys playing hard, that's, that, that's a plus. That's a big plus. It's a reflection on you, and hopefully we'll play hard this year. Uh, at times we played hard last year, but I don't think we consistently play hard enough. And I think that's one thing a, a player controls each and every day. He controls what kind of effort he'll give. And I think uh, that that's a, you know, if he, you got a team that plays hard, you got a chance. P team that plays hard and knows what to do, you got a chance every game you play. What do you feel like are your great challenges coming to the season? Um, I think, uh, like I said, number one quarterback. Uh, I think you got to have a guy that can, can give you a chance to win, and hopefully we'll find a guy that'll do that. I think um, I think we have, we'll have a lot of new guys, not a lot of new bodies, a lot of new people that we got to get into the mix and get everybody together and on, on one accord. So chemistry is going to be important because we'll, there'll, there'll be a lot of new players coming in. How do you set expectations? Are you looking around the win, or are there other things that you're looking for to kind of measure the progress? I think the number one thing we got to do, we got to get better first. You know, I think uh, before you win, you got to you got to be competitive. You got to be in the game, and uh, I think it's a process. You go from uh, losing big to, uh, to losing by a little, then winning by a little, then winning big. I think you look at any program that's turning around. That's kind of how you know how it goes. So hopefully we can we, we can be more competitive and, and get over the hurdle. Is there a single thing you're looking for your team to get better at, or like a single thing you think is the key to this season for you? I uh, talked about playing hard. The other thing is ex executing. You know, I think uh, you win through execution. You know, it's uh, what you do each and every play. Are you trying to do? Can you can you do what we're trying to teach you to do? And uh, a lot of times that talent is involved, and uh, other times it's discipline. But if we can execute and play hard and execute on a regular basis, then uh, we'll have a chance. Coach, your Valley's a proud program. How do you, what do you say, how do you talk to the alumni, fans, and all the people around the program about where you're headed? I think the number one thing we're trying to sell, hey, we, we're working hard. If this thing crashes and burns, it won't be for a lack of effort. And, and, and we put a lot of effort into it, and we're trying to work, we're trying to win. And like you said, there's that's, that's a, that's a certain uh, Valley pride. That people in the Delta are very proud of Mississippi uh, Valley State University. And hopefully we can give them something to be really proud of this year. And uh, we're asking everybody to get involved and help out in any way they can. Thank you, Coach. All righty. Coach, uh, you got some big shoes to follow there. Hmm. Talk about the transition of coming a head football coach. Well, I, I owe a lot to Coach Frazier in terms of helping me get ready to become a head coach. I, I owe a lot to Coach Williams as well uh, for getting me into the collegiate football profession. Uh, the biggest thing, though, now is just uh, having to establish those relationships on campus and keep everything going uh, forward in the right direction. The biggest thing, like I said, I don't want it to be said under my watch, is that the program took a step backwards in terms of uh, wins, uh, in terms of uh, our graduation rate, our APR, I want to keep all the positives going, uh, eliminate some of the negatives, uh, still have some upgrades in facilities. Uh, we're in the process of getting a new stadium built, so I want to make sure all those things are done uh, and done in a timely manner. I, I tell you one thing, I never thought I'd deal with as many parents as I have in terms of, you know, when, when one thing goes wrong, it's, uh, you know, you get those phone calls, you know, all of a sudden mysteriously they end up with your cell phone number and uh, call you. It may be something that they know that their son uh, didn't do correctly, and now it's, you know, everything's on me to, you know, solve that problem. Another thing is just dealing with financial aid. You know, there's always a stigma at the HBCU that financial aid is an issue, and, and sometimes it can be discouraged for even me being the head coach in terms of trying to get some things done. Uh, but, you know, those are the two biggest things, just dealing with some of the parents, uh, some of the high school coaches a little bit, and uh, just dealing with financial aid. Yeah. Well, I think it sort of goes back. It's not all about this year. It goes back to the recruiting that we've done the past couple of years in terms of uh, 
we knew that KJ was going to eventually leave. We knew that Babers would eventually leave. Now, it may have made recruiting hard for a year or two because nobody wanted to come in knowing that they would have to sit out behind those guys. But I think we fill those guys' shoes. But we just have to get the new guys to understand the sense of urgency that it takes to play college football, uh, how you can't take things for granted, and just make sure that they're doing the small things right that will lead to big things and good things for Prairie A&M University football. Well, I, I think we want to be aggressive in all phases. That's that's the biggest thing. Whether it's a kicking game, offense, we want to be aggressive. Defense, we definitely want to be aggressive. But my biggest thing is, and I tell our offense, you know, we're going to score until the clock says 0, 0, 0. We may not throw the ball to score, but, you know, if you get in the ball game, you have a chance to score, go ahead on the score. Because I think that's the way you reward those guys' effort and practice. If they know that they can get in the game, uh, get a chance to perform, then that's going to keep those guys working hard and doing the things that we're supposed to do. Like I say, on, on, on special teams, uh, we're probably going to try to block a lot of punts, and if we're not able to block punts, we're going to set up some good returns. You know, I want all three phases of my team to be able to score the football and score it effectively. You know, nothing wrong with defense scoring. You know, it's still six points. It's not a, a defensive touchdown. It's not uh, three or four points. It still counts six, just like the offense scored. So we definitely want to stay aggressive. That's going to be our motto. And, and biggest thing is fight. I think, you know, we talked about some mottos, and, and we usually give out an item at the end of each practice. And, and right now we're sort of leaning towards boxing gloves because, you know, that, that symbolizes, you know, being ready to fight and, and fighting until it's all said and done. Because, you know, sometimes you're going to be in a fight in a game and it's going to look like you don't have a chance. Then you can just throw that one lucky punch, and now you're right back in the thick of things, and, and that can change the momentum of everything that's going on. But, you know, we got to fight and stay aggressive at all times. Well, they, they say it's always harder to repeat or, you know, stay somewhere. You know, it's easy to move somewhere, but it's, it's hard to stay there. Uh, but, you know, our biggest thing is if, if we doing the right process in terms of doing the right things off the field, uh, doing the right things on the field in terms of practice, uh, you know, make sure we're doing the right, th right things in the weight room, study hall, all those things are going to make us be a, a real good football team. So the biggest thing is just doing the right things, and, and it's going to have a carryover effect to what we do on the football field. Or, well, I think we're a much more disciplined football team. We're a team that has a lot more experience than we had in the past, and I think that's going to be valuable for us. Well, I think these guys are going to be much bigger, faster, and stronger than they were in the past. They're going to do the things that they're supposed to do in the classroom, and I think those things will translate uh, to wins on the football field. I want to see our playmakers get the ball. That's the bottom line. It's not necessarily about me, but it's about our playmakers. And I think we have uh, playmakers in Dre Joseph or Jeremiah McGinty as quarterbacks. And I think our receiving core with uh, LaQuinton Evans, uh, Charles Hawkins, uh, in addition, Jared Green, uh, I think those guys are going to be big-time players for us. And I think we have three outstanding tight ends in, in uh, Javon Allen, Javon Jordan, Rashawn Allen, and Keyshawn Peterson. And uh, by the way, we have a couple backs who I think can do some things, and Brandon Rice, uh, Brian McCain, and also uh, uh, Dallas Fort. As a, as a head coach, is it, is it tempting to sometimes get kind of overly involved with things? Or, or how, how, what's your philosophy like in terms of head coach to, you know, on, on, at, at practice or, you know, get kind of your overall philosophy to be the head coach? You know, I've had the opportunity to – live 21 years of my life in the NFL. So I've seen a lot of players. Uh, I probably stayed in the league as a player longer than I should because of uh, some players didn't have the discipline to move me out. Uh, talented, more talented than I were. Uh, a guy I really love, outstanding player, was a guy by the name of Eric Drain. Fantastic body, played at the University of Missouri. He was from St. Louis, I was pulling for him, but he just couldn't get it together. And we have some talented guys there at Southern who I know uh, are talented enough to play in the NFL. And uh, I'm sure a lot of these coaches at these other schools can say the exact same things. You have some coaches in this conference that have played in the NFL, have done some fantastic things in the NFL. 
And uh, we know what they're looking for, but it all starts with discipline. It all starts with discipline, and, and uh, that's what we're all trying to get done. And by the way, we're competing against one another, too. Well, it was awesome. I, I would have to tell you that Jackson State game was uh, phenomenal. Uh, it, it took me back to the NFL. Even though I'd only been gone for a year, it took me back because when you when you drive in there, that's just an awesome atmosphere. Uh, they're giving you fingers on one hand, and then your fans are loving you on the other side. It reminded me of being either in Oakland or in Philadelphia or, or playing against the Redskins or the Cowboys, those type of fans. That's what it's all about. That's what this league is all about. And it, it was awesome. And to, to compete against these coaches, we are friends. But once we get between those lines, it's uh, mano y mano, man. Uh, we go for, for one another. And when it's all said and done at the end, uh, we love one another. Well, fans, when, fans do what they're supposed to do. They look at wins and losses. That's the bottom line. Me as a head coach, I have to first of all evaluate uh, if we give our guys a game plan to win. That's how you evaluate assistant coaches. And uh, then we have to rely on our players to go out and make plays. But we as coaches have to get a game plan that's more around our players uh, if it's not around us. You know, if they play, if our players can't do what we want, we have to get a game plan that will allow them to be successful doing what they're capable of doing. As, uh, what, what, what was that transition like to, uh, to Southern and kind of just getting, in, getting involved? And, I mean, were there things that you learned that you didn't expect? And, uh, what was that like? The, the toughest transition was for these guys to accept discipline. I really felt bad uh, after every loss for the simple fact at no point in time, other than other than the first loss against Arkansas Monticello, at no point in time in practice all week long that I feel the guys not go out and practice extremely hard. I did not believe the result that we got uh, was warranted because of the way they practiced, but because of the lack of discipline we had, the results were the way they were. Well, unfortunately, we lost 17 guys. Those guys won't have an opportunity to be able to come back uh, and do something about the two and nine. But those guys that are coming back, they're working extremely hard. The last two semesters, we've averaged over 21 guys with 3.0 or better. So they understand that. And now those guys, they're coming to uh, workouts, which are, which are voluntary. You get a majority of those guys coming, working out, and uh, – that's, that's awesome, and I think it's going to pay off on the football field. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys. Coach, uh, talk about the transition now, the excitement about being the head coach at Texas Southern. Well, I mean, you know, the newness of uh, just taking over this situation with the excitement of our kids, that's what was big. You know, our kids are excited. Uh, you know, we really have surrounded ourselves with great coaches, guys that have been experienced. So, you know, to take over in this situation, uh, the encouragement really comes from within. And that's from, uh, you know, the, the administrators, from Charles McClellan to our president. So we, we covered the opportunity. What kind of team do you want to be a coach? What, 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 what characteristics do you want your team to have? Well, the biggest deal with us is that, uh, you know, we see that the Centenario is still going upward. We got our hands to the plow. We're looking ahead. What's behind us is behind us. And, uh, you know, we look to, we can't change the path that's set before us, but uh, we know that we could uh, run this race with perseverance and endurance and uh, with great expectations. Talk about, uh, are there a couple of guys coming back that are going to be important in terms of leadership for your team? Oh, no doubt. That's where it starts. And it starts uh, with us defensively. And our leadership has always came from up front. We have uh, Jonathan Hollins and uh, Marquise Jackson. Uh, you know, our front, uh, that they are our tempo setters. And those guys have been doing a good job in the offseason. And I think uh, it would carry over throughout our team. It permeated through our whole defense. And then with the corners we have, you know, and uh, Derek is Purdy. He really has rose up as a corner along with Eric Brown. And then on the offense side of the ball, I think our durability with our running backs, with uh, Marcus Wright and Martin Gilbert, uh, you know, we're pretty doable in our running game, which 
kind of takes a, a little lift off the shoulders of bringing a brand new quarterback in and Dontavious Parker, and which allows us to run the ball and uh, hopefully get the ball downfield with plaques and passes. Let's talk a little bit about the, uh, uh, the, the transition, your personal transition to being a head coach. Are you excited about that first day on the sidelines, man, with the headphones on and, you know? Well, you know, in, in every transition that you have, you look to pour in and, uh, you know, I'm going to be me. And everybody know, uh, my, you know, my personality is, uh, you know, is, is pouring in my all. You know, going from position coach, from position coach to, to coordinating uh, uh, the defense. But nevertheless, uh, I think I surrounded myself with the, the men that I surrounded around me that keeps me humble enough. And uh, nevertheless, the kids, they kind of burn a fire within me to, uh, to allow me to continue to be who I am. How do you set expectations for 2011? Well, our expectation, I think, you know, we're still in a climbing situation. And uh, there's still a lot of unknowns out there, but it keeps us hungry. And I, I know these guys are still hungry, and that's big. Um, last question for you, Coach. Talk about what it's been like to be a part of the, that, that upward trajectory you talked about and being able to give the, give, give the fans of Texas Southern a championship. Well, I mean, that, that, that's always great. And, uh, you know, it starts from within and our, our fan base. I mean, to, to bring that championship uh, on that campus, you know, it permeates the, uh, through everything. See it in the cafeteria, see it in the classroom. But nevertheless, uh, it's still things out there that are greater for us. And, uh, you know, we had three losses a year ago. And, uh, you know, I think the sending arrow is still going upward for us. And uh, we, we look forward to uh, pursuing those expectations. Coach, thank you so much. Always. Uh, you know, this, this is this is going to be a, a good year for UAPB. I think the the things that we've done in the off season uh, in recruiting is, is going to be essential for us to uh, help our championship. You know, I, I, I've gone around. I've, I've talked to several uh, reporters here at Swag Media Day here today, and uh, they're talking about the parity or the new coaches. And it's been kind of a buzzword uh, without the, uh, the swag. I, I don't think, you know, Doug Williams returning to Gramlin or, or Spears returning to Alcorn or, or some of the other coaches going to their places. They've been assistant coaches, coordinator position, just been moved up. I don't think that's going to make that much of a difference. Uh, uh, we, we saw at, at the picking, uh, Gramlin is picked number one in the West. Uh, so, you know, by Doug being a new coach or I don't think it's going to matter as far as, you know, something negative. I don't think it's going to be that much parity. It's going to be a lot of competition. Gremlin is a great football team. The thing that we've got to do as Golden Lions, we've got to make sure that we take care of our business. I'm not really worried about uh, the Gremlins or the Prairie Views or the other schools. We've got to take care of our business, and if we can do that, I think we can be successful. Uh, you know, I, I think we started, well, I know we started uh, developing those guys last year, but how do you replace a guy that caught 101 passes? How do you replace a quarterback like Josh Boudreaux? How do you replace a defensive lineman like Abraham Abdullah or Arthur Thomas? You don't try to replace them, but you do try to find somebody that can come in and play just as well. Uh, will we have another guy that catches 101 passes? I don't think so. But I want several guys like the, the Beverly's and, and Moss Frazier's and, and Eckwood's to catch 10, 20, 30 passes each, spread it around, let our young quarterbacks develop uh, uh, an attitude or develop uh, uh, the confidence that they need, to, that they have several guys opposed to one guy that they're going to. They've got several guys that they consider their key target. So. Yes, do we have to replace them? Absolutely. And I think the coaching staff has done a great job uh, this offseason in our recruiting, uh, filling the needs that we had, which is at the wide receiver position, definitely at the offensive line, definitely at the defensive line. But I think we've addressed all three of those areas uh, that we are a better football team in all three this year. I, I don't think so. You know, as good as Raymond Weber was last year for us and as good as Josh Boudreaux was for us last year, uh, we, we still, each week, uh, we didn't put the emphasis or we didn't put uh, all the weight on these guys' shoulders and say, if we're going to win, then you guys got to play well. It was a team effort. 
And I think because it's a team effort, both on the field and mentally, then we're going to be fine. Because we, even though we, we, de we depended on these guys to play well, it wasn't just them. It was that team effort. So we look at three phases. We look at offense, we look at defense, and we definitely look at special teams. In order for us to be successful in 2011, all three of those phases has to be clicking. Yeah, that, 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 that question or that position is quarterback. We, we, we're young at quarterback. I've got two redshirt freshmen that played behind Blue Drill last year, Ben Anderson and C.J. Branch. Now, was able to go out and get a junior college young man, but he had, he's never played in the SWAC. So he's coming in. He's got the experience that we want. He played at junior college the last two years but he's never played in the SWAC. So the position that, that, that question that you're asking or that position that, that I, if I was going to put a question mark anywhere, it would be at the quarterback position. What would you say you are, Coach, in terms of the progress of building the program that you wanted, the way you wanted it? That's an easy question. You know, when I first uh, got this job uh, three years ago, uh, part of my, my plan was to implement an off-season workout ritual where we've got – 30, 40, 50 guys stand in summer school, both first and session, second session, more specifically the second session, uh, to catapult us into the season to fall ball. Uh, my first year we had just the locals that would come in and work out. Uh, my second year uh, we didn't have anybody, just the locals. Last year we had over 40 guys, and this year we've got over 60 guys. So I see the, 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 uh, the program actually progressing toward what I really want. Now it took the, the uh, grandfathering or graduating of some, some guys that, that wasn't going to con conform to it. Uh, it took uh, recruiting some guys that was going to conform to it, and I think we got a good mixture right now in 2011 of, of guys that is conforming to what I expect our football team to do and what I expect our football pe teams to be, and that's to work hard. And that's all I ask them to do is work hard. Everything else will take care of itself. You know, I, I, I was blessed to be able to play under Joe Gibbs. And uh, one of the things he used to tell us as a Redskin was, uh, you play like you practice. And I, I still use that today. If we don't practice well, we won't play well. If we don't practice hard, we won't play hard. And I still try to instill that in my players today. I think it's a team that's that's afraid. Uh, I, I was blessed to play 16 years uh, with the Redskins, played in four Super Bowls, but each year I was afraid I was going to lose my job. So what it made me do by being afraid is I worked harder than anybody else, or I tried to. And if you were going to name or you're going to pinpoint one thing about my team, is they're going to they say hey, they're working harder than anybody else. Yeah, and I think that's what makes it fun because you really can't say, well, this team is better or this team is, is going to do this. Um, you, you want that competition, that each week that you faces, face the, uh, the, the Southern Tigers or you, 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 the, uh, uh, a Prairie View, uh, whoever it is that you're facing, Jackson State, that you've got a chance, and that gives me a chance. Now, you know, the fans are rooting for you, and that, uh, we were just waiting for the last whistle to blow to see who's on top. And I think that makes a lot of fun for the SWAC. It makes a lot of fun for the, the, uh, for the fans because we have had uh, years where uh, the teams have been so dominant that you knew without a doubt that this team was going to win it. And I think a lot of the fans don't really appreciate it. If, if you are part of that, that organization, you appreciate it. But if you're not a part of it, you really don't appreciate it. But right now with the parity, I think everybody is optimistic and everybody is open-minded to that anybody could win this thing this year.